H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. Hi, welcome to the Kubernetes course on AWS. In this Kubernetes course on AWS, you will be learning the various components of Kubernetes cluster on AWS and the uh, image, uh, Linux image we will be using in this uh, course will be Ubuntu 18.04 and uh, what we will be doing in this Kubernetes cluster is we will be installing and setting up the Kubernetes cluster manually from scratch and installing and setting up the FCD cluster key value data store, provisioning the CS certificates and generating TLS certificates for Kubernetes and FCD servers. We will be installing the container runtime, which is Docker, and we will be installing and configuring the control plane, which is Kube API server, scheduler, and controller manager installation and configuration of the kubelets and kube proxy and kube config and client certificates we will be configuring the cnr plugin to wire the docker containers for networking and the cnr plugin we plugin we will be using is Cilium. and for this we will also need to create the iam rules in aws to actually to get aligned to align the kubernetes cluster with the aws so that our kubernetes cluster can talk to the aws cloud so that requires a certain permissions roles and permissions and uh, apart from that once we are done with the installation and configuration and once our cluster is up and running uh, we will be going through the various features of Kubernetes like uh, config map, secrets, roles and role binding, cluster rules, cluster role binding, daemon set, replica set, stateful sets, and help package manager, which is another open source uh, software which is be which is maintained by the Microsoft. And we will be looking at the Prometheus monitoring metrics server and dashboard so without any further ado uh, let's uh, look at the small demo on kubernetes and as i have said that uh, the cni plugin we will be using is Cilium, and there is some system requirement actually so Cilium requires a Linux kernel which is greater than or equal to 4.9 and uh, these are the version that the uh, Cilium container network interface is compatible with so in this course we will be using the we will be using 1.14.2 so which is fine so we are good over here and uh, uh, let's see what we have here so let me check. Get component status. The short form is CS. Our FCD instances are up and running. Scheduler is healthy. Controller manager is healthy. Here I am using the two instances of FCD servers or cluster. Uh, generally, we go with the odd numbers like 1, 3, 5, and 7 but uh, the instances we are using is t2 medium uh, which is uh, not free of course so you have to pay for that so you will have to open an aws account and uh, we will be using t2 medium actually for all the for uh, throughout our course so which are like 4 gb of ram and our 
uh, masters and two nodes will be also 4 GB of RAM and 20 GB of the uh, disk space we will be using. So let me see what we have. Let's uh, check our nodes if it is ready. Our node is ready and uh, let's uh, spin up our Cilium agent on our node. So let's go to Cilium and uh, here we will be using the we will be connecting a Cilium agent to the FCD cluster which is like these two instant FCD1 and FCD2 let me show you uh, this one this is a FCD instance and another one is right here 195 so let me show you what we have here it's external and yeah there you go so this is the Celia manifest for when it is 1.5 version almost the latest one and 1.6 Celium 1.6 release is around the corner it can be released anytime maybe next week or so so here we are connecting to our etcd instances on port 2379 and our ca certificate files are located in this directory where lib etcd secret and uh, client key and client certificate files are located in the same directory and we are opening our Prometheus server address. I've already uncommented this thing, so it will be listening on port 8090. So let's go and create our secrets. I think I haven't created, a, created uh, the Cilium secret. Let me check here where lib Kubernetes. So this is where all the certificates and files are located. Oh, I have my notes over here. I have documented. Yeah, we have not created, so we just created the secrets. And also I would like to do one more thing. I want to create an alias of the commands kpo which will be kubectl get po dash oy dash dash all name spaces and kubectl get svc dash oy dash dash all name spaces po stand for the pods and svc stand for the services so that I don't have to type such a long command each and every time so let me copy this also and here we go so we should be good to go okay and ksa yeah so this cluster ip is the default kubernetes cluster ip which is kubernetes used to communicate internally with the other services which will be communicated on this one and this is only for the internal use and so we have cilium up and running let me clear this get out of this let's go to Cilium now let's run the Cilium agent on the node create dash f external and one more thing we will we need to we will be running is core DNS which is cube DNS domain name server so let's do that cube CTL create dash f core core dns dot yml and there we go so yep it's up and running clear it up and uh, let's look at uh, the prometheus let's run something let's do prometheus over here so let me bring up the Prometheus monitor server and we will be seeing the 
graphical form of it. So let's let's go in here. Let's so do WIM, and this is should be test two. So if we go over here. We are creating the cluster IP as well as we are creating the we are creating two sources Prometheus and Prometheus Open, which will be our external service, which is of type load balancer. So which will be will be accessing actually from our browser. And this is a deployment, Prometheus deployment. And these are all the configuration we have done to scrape the matrix from Prometheus. And this is the config map we have created. We have created the service account and the cluster rule binding and cluster rules. Actually, it, it will need certain permission Prometheus to scrape the matrix, which is like a permission or the, you can say the privilege to access the API server and the resources the resources like nodes, node proxy services, endpoints, and pods, and the verb we can verb is like what are the action it is allowed to perform, like get, list, and watch. Again, ingress is extension. Verbs are like what are the action it can perform, get, list, and watch, and non resource URL like slash metrics, and the service account, role binding. And through this service account, actually, we will be accessing this uh, API server, scraping the matrix across the cluster. So let's close it. And uh, actually, I've already created the service account and cluster rule binding, which is required from, in, from inside the pod to scrape the matrix. With the secret and token and all. Uh, I don't know whether I have created the secret. Let me check if I have created it or not. So I will need to run the cluster rule binding. Let me run this. I think this one I have not run. Yeah, I have not run before. So we have created this cluster rule binding and uh, one more thing I want to check is the secrets we'll come to know if we, if it is already created we'll get an error and um, no we have to go here it's already exist yeah so we have already created the secrets actually the secret I, I have created is from this this file secret dash prom so let's let's run it now yeah let's run it and this actually the course will be more more or less will be hands-on so most of the stuff will we be doing it will be hands-on and this course is quite uh, grueling in nature because we will be doing a lot of configuration and we will be installing and configuring the various component of kubernetes manually as well as the fcd cluster so there will be a lot of configuration as you can see that this is my master node and this is the worker node which is running so all of these are on different uh, different all of these are on the different instances we are not using cube adm cops or mini cube here we want uh, we will be creating our own cluster which will be configured by ourselves and we will be using the cni plugin by like uh, by it will be our own choice actually in this case we are using cni so we are you know bringing 
which is CNI is uh, Celium actually. Celium is also, also an open source uh, software which is being maintained by the company called Isovalent. And so if you see the, the cluster we are creating is the amalgamation of various open source software. Prometheus is another open source software which is maintained by another company. So you will see there's uh, so much of every, uh, and even that city is, uh, being, or is, is an open source software which is maintained by the different companies. So you can see, you know, the amalgamation of different open source software we are using to bring the Kubernetes cluster up and running. And uh, the, the environment is AWS cloud. So you, you can see like three, four, five, uh, different companies and different uh, software and different and the another you know, cloud and the cloud environment we are using over here in this case is AWS you can do it on Google but I'm I'm not familiar with the uh, Google cloud environment and IBM and digital oceans and all so let me run one more thing which will be our main file. Let me run the Kubemetric server as well. And what have we got? Oh, actually, our Prometheus is not running. CD, Celium, Cube, CTL, create dash f, test 2. All right, now it's running. And uh, let's go to cube CTL create dash F cube metrics. Oh, it's already exist. And here is a Prometheus load balancer link. Let me see if we actually it's a load balancer takes some time to get uh, configured. Yeah, it's still coming up. So let's give it some time. And by that time, let me check the Prometheus. Uh, this is cube metrics. This should be put at the 80. There we go. So our metric server is up and running. Uh, now you can see the wall of text actually. It's generating. It's generating tons and tons of metrics here. And let's see if our Prometheus is up and running. There we go. So one good thing about Prometheus is that uh, you can create your own query, select queries which is called PromQL, Prometheus Query Language. And you can have put in certain conditions and like query the resources. And if you want to set an alert or if you want to monitor a certain amount of like, you know, CPU, if the node is up or not, there are different, different uh, scenarios where you can create a query for. So let's see what we have. Oh, let's check the target first. So here we go. We have 
कि वो एपीआई सर्वर पॉड सर्विसेज क्यूबलेट व्हिच इज अनोड एंड एंड पॉइंट्स सिलियम पॉड्स सर्विस एंड पॉइंट्स ऑल आर हेल्दी अप एंड रनिंग लेट्स गेट बैक हियर लेट्स डू सम स्टफ दिस इज सिलियम execute we are scraping some metrics from the cilium pods let's look at the graph form which is a good thing like you know you can just get it in the console as well as in the graphical form and uh, let's do something else capacity pods and so when all so this is just a small demo i wanted to give give it to you guys about how the things will go once we have a cluster up and running and i also wanted to show you like what we will be doing and how our setup will look like so the reason for this actually course is that uh, you will be knowing what actually kubernetes is and what it requires to bring kubernetes cluster up and running because at the workplace you will be doing the more or less the same thing what you will be doing here and so you will be familiar with the various component of kubernetes and it will help you in uh, debugging the errors and the bugs which you will encounter because kubernetes is open source software and it's a moving target uh, because the release happen happens quite frequently so you need to keep uh, keep yourself updated with the latest version of not only with the kubernetes but also with the other open source software we are using like prometheus uh cilium you can use calico flannel uh, cube router these are another cni plugins but i am using cilium because cilium is the future it's based on berkeley bracket filter which is bpf uh, and which will replay which will easily replace the ip tables which is really in the la large organization is an really challenging task to maintain the ip tables and then it has some performance issues too so i will highly recommend this course because uh, you will be doing a lot of uh, devops and devops stuff in this so you you will actually know when you will encounter the errors or bugs so which component to look at and when there is some issues in your cluster so because you cannot rely on the support each and every time or on the kubernetes slack so some of the stuff that you should be knowing it before you jump before even you start using the cops or kubeadm it's good actually that you don't have to configure much on cops and kubeadm it saves a lot of time but uh, you will miss out on the actual kubernetes learning so i will highly recommend this course and come and please join this course so that's all i have for the demo uh, thank you